Welcome to the Social University Podcast. We are so glad you're joining us today because we want to help business owners, entrepreneurs, and people just like you who want to build their business online. Listen, if we can do it, you can do it. So let's go. Hey guys, have you ever been burned out, not just as a business owner, but as a content creator and as someone who is desperately trying to keep up with the demand of all the stuff you have going on. It's bound to happen. So we're going to talk today about how to repurpose content to kind of streamline so that you don't have to constantly be creating new content all the time. And I'm going to give you not only suggestions for where to find and repurpose that content, we're also going to, I'm going to give you our five top favorite apps that will help you generate different content as well. So let's go ahead and jump in. Um, First things first, um, I am Karen Taradis with Social U, and uh, thank you guys for joining me this morning. Uh, Next week, if you're interested, we are going to be talking about beyond likes and shares, how to spark real community engagement, you know, not just posting, but how to get people to talk to you as well as you talking to them. So let's go ahead and jump in. Do Today we're going to talk about do more with less, the power of repurposing content. And again, burnout is a real thing. Um, having a creativity block, it's a real thing. I am so excited that my team helps me come up with these topics because I've been doing this for so long. I I feel like I'm getting in my own way. I'm like, I don't know what people want. I don't know. I've done that two years. Oh, yeah, they know that. Um, sometimes you overthink it. I know I'm guilty of doing that. So I'm sure other people are guilty of doing that. Not, not saying any names, but let's, let's go ahead and jump into it. Okay. First things first, we're going to talk about, um, some ways that you can just go ahead and execute some of the different, um, repurposing things, things, topics, categories. Okay. First things first, you know, you can use the same short form videos, everywhere. Once you've made a video, whether it's for TikTok or Reels or YouTube, you can put it in your library and then share it to a different platform later. Now, I'm not telling you to share everything across the same different platforms on the same day. That's a big no-no. But I am saying, let's say you're not quite ready to start on TikTok. All those reels that you've been doing, you can put them in your video library and then go back and pull that content at a later time. It is totally okay to reuse that stuff. We've been getting some really, really great engagement and great views from YouTube from some of our older Instagram reels and our older TikTok videos. So it is totally doable. Um, Something else is social media cross-posting in general. It's when you take uh, something from a different platform and repurpose it for this platform. So let's say you have a really high-performing post from Facebook last week. Can you then in turn put it on LinkedIn? Yeah, there's a good chance you can. You're probably going to have to change the caption and resize the photo, but it is doable. You can also reuse just about any non-seasonal content after three to six months. You don't want to keep like a running rotation of the same content. But statistically, if you had a post that did really well three months ago, it's going to do really well again. Again, statistically, if it got about 20 likes last time, it'll get about 20 likes this time. People like what they like and it will normally do as well, if not better than what it did before. That's just the way it is. Um, Now, of course, non-seasonal content, you really can't post uh, Christmas in July unless you're doing a promotion that's Christmas in July, in which case you can. But um, yeah, you can reuse. If it was good once, it'll be good again. And a lot of content for a lot of creators is evergreen. So you can use it wherever you want to, especially if it's funny. Funny does really well. Okay. You can do a transcription um, where you transcribe a video to a blog. This is something that we do constantly. Every time I do this kind of training and give information, one of our team then transcribes these videos and we repurpose it as blog content because you, and we use three to five different graphics on each blog. That way we can post it to LinkedIn. We can pin the same blog or post the same blog across every single platform on the same day because we're using different graphics with it. It looks like different information, different caption, same information where you can use it everywhere. You have to get more proficient at recycling because you don't have time to reinvent the wheel every time you need content. It is, um, it's, yeah, a lot. 
Becky says, speaking of funny content, people need to check out the Social You podcast. Yeah, the one we had last week has a very interesting name. <laughs> so, mm, um, whoever names those, Becky, um, does a really good job because those things are hilarious. Uh, thanks for the thanks for the reminder, Becky. Okay. So you can also pull a quote from a blog or video or graphic. So my team will just use this, this as an example. I'm going to talk to you about five different apps for repurposing content. That can be a series over the next five weeks on Facebook where they post one app a week and tell you what it does, how much it costs, and why it's beneficial to you. So that one blog post is now giving us five different, um, five different posts. And that's just one platform. You can mix it up and do, I mean, all kinds of things. If you're in real estate and you're talking about how to um, weatherproof your house against the heat and there's 10 tips, you can spread that out in a 10-week series. There's all kinds of things you can do, just as an example. Um, You can also add different graphics to a previous blog. If you have a blog that is relevant and the information is still good, you can totally refresh it and republish it. I'm not saying delete it from the original post. You want to keep that up there for Google. But if we are do, if I'm talking to you about imposter syndrome and it's the same information as it was previously, I can change the graphics and update the title and it looks like brand new content. So if you're on vacation and you just can't do a video or you just can't do a blog, it is totally okay to repurpose something that's functional. You want to check your Google analytics and make sure you're using something that is um, that performed well before. You wouldn't pull something that didn't do well the first time. Duh. But you definitely want to have that available um, so that you can don't have to, again, don't have to do it all the time. July is a slow month. A lot of people are on vacation and it's very normal to take some time off. And this will allow you to do that without putting you in the hot seat for content. Okay. Um, converting a blog to an infographic. Again, we could go in, I'll use this video as the example. Uh, it would be very simple to go into Canva, pick out a template and say the top five apps for repurposing or recycling content and then put them, fill them in because it's a template, very simple, fill it in and then use that as a post literally everywhere because people, people do love a good infographic for real. Um, okay. You, okay. Con- convert blog to, inf- I, I do like infographics and you can use that on any, any list format that you have. Um, you can even do it. Is it like a team introduction? Just an idea. Okay. Convert your blog into a checklist or cheat sheet. People love themselves a cheat sheet or checklist. They also like quizzes. So you can convert any material into different looking material if you just put it in a different format and change the wording a little bit. So like, for example, for this one, it would be titled, um, let's see how many, uh, seven, I have said, oh, 17. Um, it would be 17 ideas to repurpose your content. And it would be a checklist. So very simple. And it would look very different. Um, using slides from a presentation where you pull a single image. I will have to give kudos where kudos are due. I do a ton of presentations. I do a ton of training. And my team creates my slides and um, Becky bang on some of the best stuff I've ever had. She is fast and proficient. Those slides are amazing. It would be, and I I love stats. We do a lot of stats. I was one of those kids that got told because I said so one too many times when I was a kid. I hate that. I want to know why. Don't just tell me that I need to be on LinkedIn because it's the right thing to do. Tell me why I need to be on LinkedIn. So that being said, I love stats. So my team could go through our, and we have so many to, so many to pick from and those slides are beautiful and they're all branded very well. And they could pick those and do a statistic series on any platform because I teach on every platform. So, um, that that's a great idea. If, you, if you've done presentations, use your slides. You can also go from audio to video. And I'm going to talk to you about an app that will do that, but you can rip audio from a video you've done and use it as your podcast. Have you not started a podcast? Do you need help with that? Uh, we can help you with that. We have a starter kit um, a post that tells you about very inexpensive uh tools that we use to start our own podcast. And uh, basically it's like a really simple one-on-one to kind of walk you through it. And I think that would probably be a really good uh, podcasting one-on-one getting started would be a really good topic of content. You guys let me know what you think about that in the um, 
in the comments below. Okay. Throwback Thursday. If you have, um, and I'm just using throwback Thursday, people don't really use that hashtag very much anymore. However, again, old content that was good is still good content. And when I say throwback, I'm talking about two milestones to, um, things that like our anniversary, um, we turn 14, in uh, August, this in this next month, we will have been doing this exclusively social media for 14 years. That's a big milestone. Uh, anniversaries with employees. When you started, you know, if you offer a product or service, when that s- service started, when you opened a different branch, these are great milestones to shout out when you are looking for content. User generated content. I cannot tell you how awesome it is. It doesn't matter if the images are perfect. It doesn't matter if the video sound is not quite right. People love seeing user-generated content. For starters, third-party endorsement goes a long way. Amazon has built their business on it. So it's Yelp and all of those other places that are asking you for reviews. They, they love third-party. And when you share something from one of your fans who likes you, all of the people who follow them are going to see it. And it validates your service to their connected friends and family. So user-generated content, even if it's older, if it's still relevant, use it. Testimonials in particular are a good one. And I, you know, that's of course coming up in the next like two points, but yes, user-generated content. You can also break down lists into single posts. So if you have a list, if you find a cool article on Pinterest or you find a cool article online, you can break it down into single pieces. Very simple to do. Testimonials, again, you can never go wrong with a testimonial. I am the same Karen that I was when I did this five years ago. So if we got a compliment on our services five years ago, I can still use that testimonial today. That's just how it works. Um, And then the last one I have is vendor or partner highlights. Like, for example, we like, I like small business and we shout out small business weekly on Instagram. Because we work, I love the vendors we work with. We're very loyal to our vendors. We've been with them for years and years. And I feel like I would be doing our audience a disservice if I didn't share that information with people because they're just so good. Um, WP Site Mason for hosting and website creation. Uh, Enthusiasts with Lisa Shook for marketing messaging. It's just, they're they're great to work with. We do have some really good vendors. Um, and then there's local, I'm, I'm, I will always, you will, always hear me go on and on about Alabama goods. I love them. I've been shopping there since they were very first opened. Love them. Love local. Buy local. Yeah. Buy local. Okay. Now let's talk about some apps to recycle. I have five that I'm going to touch on. You've probably heard of some, and I bet you there's at least one of these you did not know about. So first and foremost, any kind of AI can help you to recreate a blog or recreate a caption, or you can like chat GPT. You can take your blog and load it in there and ask it to pull out quotes. And it will give me the top five um, best quotes from this article. It streamlines it. So you don't have to worry about doing it yourself. It makes it so much easier for you. You have to use what's available to you. I am partial to Gemini. I like the chat, G- the Google's version of chat GPT, which is Gemini, um, because it's, the information is a little more up to date um, and I'm partial to Google. Yeah, Gemini. Um, number two, Wave, and that's W-A-A-V-E. It lets you turn your podcast or audio into an animated video which is very cool. So if you are recording and you may be one of these folks that doesn't like to get in front of a camera, that's totally okay. Or you may have a podcast that you love. You can then in turn, turn around with wave and make those clips into animated videos, which you can use of course, anywhere. It is $19 a month, which is not bad at all. So it, and it gives you another option. Number three, I love this option. My We have mixed feelings in my team. Some love it, some don't love it. Lumen, L-U-M-E-N, five. The way they have it written out, when you see it, it looks like Lumens instead of Lumen five. It uh, allows you to transform articles and blog posts into video content. Okay, how does that work? You take your URL and it's free. There's a free version. You can pay if you want to pay. It's $59 per month. It does give you access to more templates and it removes their logo, of course. But you take your URL from your blog and you put it into Lumen 5 and it will automatically pull the graphics it wants to use. It will add graphics where needed to kind of round out what you have, and it will pull the points that it thinks are important. So it will auto-generate, and then all you have to do is proofread it and edit, and you've got a video. Very easy. 
it beats the heck out of trying to go through and do all that stuff by hand. It's just a faster way to do it. Um, now you can do it, like take their templates and automatically manually upload what you want, but letting it auto generate is a good way to kind of find out what um, the program thinks is important, which I also always find interesting. So Lumen five and try the free version to see if you like it. Okay. Canva. We're going to talk about ver four very specific tools that are available on Canva that will help you uh, repurpose content. Number one is the infographic templates. If you have not taken time to look at the infographic templates, do it. Do it now. Stop what you're doing. Well, don't stop what you're doing with me, obviously. But when you're done, run and go look at the infographics because they have some great templates. So very effective. Um, the second Canva feature would be a video background with some content or same content. So let's say you posted this awesome testimonial uh, six months ago and you want to post it again. You can go into Canva's video library and add a related background video, copyright free, and put your information, your quote over the top of it. Or even better, we keep a file of B-roll footage of our team. So if it's, let's say the um, the testimonial is talking about how awesome, <clears throat> excuse me, how awesome they think Jaden is. So if we have B-roll footage of Jaden working at her computer, it would make total sense to use that video as a background for a testimonial about her. That makes sense. Uh, if you are talking about um, information, if you're giving a tip about writing, there is a video of somebody. You, and if you don't, can't find one, make one. Easy, easy. Where you're just typing on the computer. It makes it more interesting. And there are some really cool features that you can add that will dress up just about anything and make it look different. Mm. The next Canva feature is called Magic Switch. Very easy. It resizes your content. So if you want to use the same graphic on Facebook that you do on Instagram, it resizes it automatically, makes it easy to use, not awkward. And then the last Canva tool is Magic Write. It is an AI assisted, um, AI enabled writing assistant that lets you um, generate content with a few prompts. Very cool. So you can have a house of templates, three or four templates, and then ask Magic Right to generate your content and put them in the different templates. And they're going to look different. So those are all the Canva tools. And then the last tool, this is a newer tool. I haven't had a chance to play with it yet, but it looks very promising. It's called Video and it's V-I-D-Y-O dot A-I. It breaks long video into shorter clips. So if you have like this video right here, we could load it into that app and it would break it into pieces that are manageable, that make sense, where you don't have to sit down and watch the whole thing and cut it and cut it. It makes it so much easier to do that. Um, there are several different apps that will do that. This is one of many, but it is, again, it's rated very highly. And we're going to experiment with it, and then we'll come back and give you uh, a report on whether it's a yay or nay. So um, that is it for me today. Please, please join us next week when we are going to talk about uh, beyond likes and shares about how to spark real community engagement, because that's seriously, that's what it's all about. If you guys have heard me talk about trends and what's happening right now, community is, is huge. You have to build your community and, uh, you know, that transparency and that genuine wanting to help your, your followers. It, it translates. So that's what we're going to be talking about next week. In the meantime, if you have questions or comments, you can always leave us a comment or send us a direct message. We do monitor those and we're happy to respond. Until next week, I'm Karen Taradas for Social U and I am here to help. And I'm a delight. <laughs> Thanks for joining us for the Social University podcast. We hope you enjoyed it. Be sure to follow us on all of our social media at Stay Social U. That's the letter U. And we will talk to you next week. Remember, you've got this.